This rip is so fun and addicting that I guarantee you're gonna wake up five minutes early every morning just to play it. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I've got a free gift for you that you're gonna love. Okay, now what do you say we break down this riff and see exactly what makes it so addictive? First of all, it uses one of my favorite picking techniques in the entire world, which is hybrid picking. Essentially using a combination of your pick and your fingers to play the strings. And even if you've never hybrid picked before in your entire life, this is your first time ever even hearing about it, I guarantee I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in the easiest way possible. So for a quick little exercise, the good thing about this riff is that it's only contained within three strings the D string, G string, and the B string. And so we have three strings that we're working with for this entire riff, the entire time, just those three strings. We're not gonna be using any other strings. So with this exercise, we're gonna focus on those three strings. So starting with our pick, right? Our pick is gonna be in charge of the D string. Okay, and our middle finger is gonna be in charge of the G string. And we just do a gentle pluck with our middle finger. I try to grab the string right where my nail and the flesh of my finger meet. You know, and you don't need long nails to do it. This doesn't really require too harsh of an attack. We're not really chicken picking here. We're just using our fingers, right? So you just use that, just that, uh, like I said, that kind of right where the nail meets the flesh. Use that part to pick it. So your middle finger is in charge of the G string. Your uh, ring finger is gonna be in charge of the B string. Now, we're gonna be using double stops for this riff, which means two note intervals. So two notes at the same time we're gonna be playing. So the good thing here is we're not gonna to need to play it with our middle finger and our ring fingers independently. We're gonna be playing them at the same time. So essentially what we're doing for this exercise is you're gonna pick the D string with your pick, and then you're gonna pluck the G and the B string with both your middle and your ring fingers. So you're just going back and forth. You're picking the D string, and then you're plucking the G and B. Just back and forth. Doesn't have to sound good in terms of we're not we're not even you know fretting any notes. We're just playing the open strings. If you want to mute the strings, you can too. You can just do this. And that's gonna be a great exercise just to get you started and get you comfortable with the movement because if it's gonna feel weird at first if you've never done hybrid picking uh, before, but if you stick with it and use this exercise as a warm-up, you're gonna get it in no time. So one more time, just again, with this exercise, we're just playing the D string and then we're plucking the G and B. So in a two part motion, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And this is gonna play into the riff perfectly because we're that that's how we're gonna be picking every single note in the actual riff, where we're playing the D string with our pick and we're plucking the G and the B with our middle and ring fingers. So this exercise is literally designed to specifically help you with this riff, but it also will be a great foot in the door with hybrid picking in general. All right, now let's go into the first part of this riff. This is in the key of D. All right, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be playing that open D string quite a lot. So we're gonna start by playing the open D string. And then with our first finger, we're gonna bar the uh, seventh fret here on the G and the B strings. And then we're gonna pluck those two strings with our, our uh, middle and, and uh, ring finger. It's gonna go like that. Oh, I need to get the intonation on this guitar fixed. All right, that's essentially trying to make a uh, D triad, right? Three uh, notes that actually make up a D chord. Although we're technically playing uh, two D notes, one here and one here, and have that major third on top. So I guess technically, not really a chord since we don't have a fifth in there or any other interval. We'll just call it a chord because we're working with three notes. But that's the cool thing about this riff is that we're implying all these different chord changes, but we're still centering around that open D string. So we're starting off with the seventh fret, as I said, on the G and the B string, uh, with the uh, picking the uh, D string first. And then the next thing we're gonna do is quickly with our ring finger and then our uh, middle finger here, we're gonna move over to the ninth fret of the G string and then the eighth fret of the um, uh, B string. And we're playing that next interval there. Right, which even back and forth between those sounds really musical. You 
You know, it's great. So we're going to start off with... And then once we play that, we're going to bring it down and we're going to bar once again, this time on the uh, fifth fret, G and the B. So we're going... Then... Then we go to the fifth fret, then back up to the seventh fret. So, so far we have... And then from here, we're going to bring it up to the 12th fret, still barring. This. I like to switch from my first finger to my third finger, just for the sake of ease, right? If you can totally use your first finger if you want. So you're going like... I like to do this. With my third finger, because that'll, that'll uh, allow my next move to be a little bit smoother. So once we're playing the 12th fret on the G and the B string, we're going to uh, do like a slight... Uh, um, you could say like a uh, ending point here where we play the D string again and then 11 on the G string and 10 on the B string. So that's kind of the, the ending of like the first phrase, let's say. So it's like. Like that. And with this, even though we're playing the D string, we're, we're you know, picking it multiple times kind of also letting it ring a little bit, so it, ha it creates this nice musical tension. All right, then our next move, we're actually gonna repeat the same thing that we did in the first measure, where we're going the seventh fret, barring on the seventh fret, and then going nine and eight on the G and the B, respectively. We're doing that again. And then we're gonna go Where we're going open D, fifth fret bar on G and B, open D again, fifth fret bar again, uh, open D again, and then uh, barring on the seventh fret now, and then holding it for like a, a half note or something. So it's. And this riff doesn't have to be played fast, it can be played nice and slow, whatever tempo you play it at. It'll still work. Just focus on, you know, again, the fact that we're playing these double stops and, and kind of hear the melody and just kind of let it flow. So it doesn't matter if it's flowing at a slower tempo or a faster tempo, it's still gonna get the point across. And hey, if you're enjoying this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all future lessons and maximize your guitar playing. All right, now back to the lesson. So, so far what we have, this is a quick recap. From the top, we have... Like that, and if we were to play it a little bit slower. Still sounds good. It doesn't sound slow down for the sake of playing it slow. It actually still works, right? And very musical too. So we finished that first part. Now we're gonna essentially repeat this whole thing over again with a different ending. So we're going back to starting with that bar on the seventh fret. All right, then we're going fifth fret, seventh fret, then we're at 12th fret, and then we got 11, 10 here. All right, just like we did previously. And then we're gonna go. And that last little phrase is kind of how we uh, conclude it, right? Although this is a very repeatable, you could play this riff cyclically if you want, right? To, to fill that five minutes, you can just play this riff over and over again. All right, so we went through this a little bit fast. Let's let's recap, and of course, feel free to you know go back in the video and revisit any of the parts that you are still working on. But recapping, here we go. Starting from the top, I'm gonna play it nice and slow. And now here it is, just a little bit faster. All 
Another cool thing about this riff is that you can play it with a clean guitar signal as pristine as you want it to be, or you can add some dirt, you know, and some distortion, and it kind of has a little bit of an Eddie Van Halen sort of vibe. He loved to play double stops with all that gain. It just had such a cool sound, you know, sound that really defined, you know, his style. So however you decide to dial in your tone, this riff will work perfectly. So now you have a super fun and addictive guitar riff that you can practice for five minutes a day, and it's gonna make you excited about playing guitar. It's musical, it's versatile, it's got all kinds of things going for it, and I'm glad that you know how to play it now. And as a reward for sticking to it and staying committed to this guitar lesson and your guitar playing, I'm gonna give you that free gift I was telling you about. It's called the Fretboard Conveyor Belt. This is a system that I've developed that will show you how the fretboard works, how scale patterns and chord shapes and all of those things are really just part of this movable system that makes guitar playing so much easier. And not only that, you're gonna be able to play awesome solos in any key you could possibly think of. I'm telling you, you don't wanna miss this. So be sure to click here to claim your copy of the system or check the link in the description box. And now I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.